Got a 2007 stretched out Peter built a new 3406 The cat likes a pull Flying down the interstate 13 on the stick I got a stack of paper logs Like we used to use yesterday When we still drove our trucks with pride But now they cut back My horse has got an e-log on the dash Now I'm always running behind Here's a department that we're in that I know a lot of you guys should really pay attention to and what these guys are about to tell you. And it's the maintenance department. And we're here with Todd and Sean. How you doing, guys? Hi. And we're going to talk about uh, just a couple of little things. And um, I, well, I'm going to basically let them tell you uh, some of the things that might be driving the shop nuts that we're maybe not doing that we should be doing. <laughs> so I'll leave it up to whoever wants to chime in on that one. We'll start at the first one here. How you doing, guys? Appreciate you professional drivers out there. Uh, a couple things we need to focus on, uh, pre-trip pro and uh, post-trip inspections on there. This can save you a lot of time and effort. Uh, make sure you're doing it by the book. Make sure you're checking everything, including your windshield wiper fluids. Uh, last thing you want to do is uh, uh, realize you're going into a scale. Stop, get out and do your pre-trip <laughs> and find out that uh, you know, you're missing a mud flap or you're, you're short some items or your windshield wipers don't work because you don't have any fluid. So. You want to make sure that uh, you do a good check. Uh, if you need these items, let your DM know. We can open up a ticket and we can pay for them out of funds here in road maintenance and uh, keep you keep you going. So otherwise, uh, if we have to call road service, it's probably 20 minutes to time we get the, the service booked. It could be 60 minutes to 90 minutes time to get there. So. All will. just for a mud flap type deal. For a you know. mud flap. And it's probably going to cost selling on about $500. So, yeah. And uh, if your wheels aren't turning, nobody's making any money. So, so anything to add to that? or? Uh, no, absolutely. And, you know, one of the other things is, especially pro, post trips, pre trips, you know, no one wants to pick up a truck or a trailer and have a maintenance issue. No one wants to sit and start their day, wait for service truck for a tire, mud flap, you know, whatever, you know, look out for the next guy or girl, you know, and make sure the trailer is good to go when you drop it. If not, you know, get with us, send in, you know, your request form and, you know, we'll get someone out to the trailer, even if it's, you know, dropped, you know, that way when the next truck hooks up to it, it'll be good and, you know. Keep everyone rolling, keep everyone moving, making money, all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, there's some si simple tips, you know, every now and then, especially with winter coming on, uh, stop engine light, check engine light, you know, be more common. Uh, one of the simplest things is, you know, just check your fluids. Make sure coolant's stopped off, oil. Believe it or not, even on some of these trucks, washer fluid will uh, <laughs> Yep. <laughs> we'll have washer fluid gets those uh, alarms light. going, yeah. Yeah, I mean... There's sensors on everything on the trucks. Everything's monitored. It's crazy to believe, especially you know, compared to old trucks where it's pretty much just the drivers telling you what's going on. To hey, this broke. I need a fix. To you know, we can sit at our computer and look up codes, see exactly, basically what exactly is going on. I mean, not that we don't, you know, use the driver's word because you know that's always great information. You know, driver give us better information the quicker and, you know, better service we can provide. All right. Awesome. Yeah, because I noticed, uh, guys, a lot of times it takes two minutes. Just send in that message when you're dropping the trailer, especially if you're at terminal, please. <laughs> you know, let somebody know there's an issue with the trailer, no matter how small it is, so that the next guy isn't stuck waiting two hours. I mean, I know you yourselves wouldn't like it, so think of the next guy that's picking it up. Uh, just... Put a message in, let breakdown take care of it, take off on your next load, and somebody will be by to fix it, you know. So, anything else you want to add, uh, oh, yeah, Todd? Definitely, we got a lot of opportunities for improvements here. Uh, one thing is uh, knowing where to park your truck. So, make oh, sure yes. uh, <laughs> we, had a, we had a driver park out in front of their, uh, their neighborhood there, and of course, it wasn't zoned for large trucks and got a cost, uh, sell on $4,000 for the tow and storage bills. So, Want to make sure that uh, you got permission to park somewhere. Uh, want to make sure that it's built for heavy trucks and trailers and built up properly. 
Um, I know a lot of guys like to show off that, that nice new Lone Star in the front of your house, but sometimes your driveway and your front yard is no place to put a truck. And uh, if we have to call out road service and uh, a wrecker, and it could be five to $800 just to pull it out of your front yard. So <laughs> That's never just good. Just be, be cog cognizant of uh, where you put it, make sure zonings, make sure you got uh, permission to put it there and uh, just make sure it can hold the weight. Not, nothing worse than parking a truck where you're technically not supposed to do it. Then you come back to get it and it's gone. It's gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> happens more often than it should. So. Yeah, so make sure you're checking, especially if you're parking at truck stops, guys. Um, I see a lot of times trucks parked and trailers dropped and nobody's bothered to go inside to register with the truck stop. So I suggest you do that to make sure you don't come back to a missing truck. <laughs> yeah. Right. One of the other things is, uh, you know, a lot of times guys will park their truck, especially Bob Tell, in the driveway or even in the yard where yeah car pick up it'll just go on out no big deal you know big truck grass gets a little wet get a little dew on it you know those tires just will spin and then you're just stuck mm -hmm. we have to call a wrecker out and you know winch you out your own driveway <laughs> or yard and, and that's you know, even more that's embarrassing, embarrassing than everything it is embarrassing. <laughs> 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 yeah. especially when it's only two inches of snow or something oh yeah <laughs> Uh, I think another issue that we run in, we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on lockouts. Simple thing <laughs> like that, guys, and everybody's guilty of it. So we just want to make sure that uh, um, you, you check, make sure before you lock it that you got your uh, your keys in your pocket there. Does the Celadon have an option for the drivers to be able to get a spare key and possibly tie it somewhere or, you know? Uh, th there's some secrets out there where people place it and I don't want to disclose it. No, nope, no, nope, definitely not. Cause yeah. that's what I do. I have a spare, so. Spare, okay. And I've got it in a secret, top secret location. <laughs> <laughs> top secret. Yeah. So we won't disclose the location. But, so uh, there is availability. Drivers can get a spare key possibly made. I think so. Yeah. I think we can make that, make yeah. that happen. So. But. Cause I know I've run into that where I've had drivers come up to me saying, um, I locked myself out. What do I do? I go, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how much money do you got? Sure. <laughs> you yeah. got two options. Call the company and embarrass yourself or just pay to get it done. Sure, sure. <laughs> Sometimes it could be uh, 75 bucks up to $300 depending how far they got to drive and uh, yeah. what time of morning. <laughs> yeah. So at 2 in the morning on a, on a Sunday morning. And it's going to get cost, expensive. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to get a little pricey for it. Especially if you just went in to take a shower and you're just standing out there in your shorts and it's like maybe, you know, 35 degrees out. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Don't be that guy. Right? Yeah, don't be that guy. <laughs> so, um, another thing we run into quite often is uh, when a guy drops a trailer, he doesn't disconnect his uh, pigtails and his uh, um, airlines and everything. So I'm guilty of that once yeah. in a while. I've forgotten, and so, uh, that's, you know, that's an embarrassing we'll give you thump. One. Yeah, that's give an embarrassing one. thump. You don't want to hear. So, I've been in yard trucks, <laughs> and uh, so that that is embarrassing and costly and time. Uh, you know, you're basically dead in the water until somebody gets out there and gets you fixed up. And mm -hmm. everybody in the world knows what you did. So yeah. <laughs> you know, don't be that guy, right? Yeah. So, um, John, anything you want to touch base on fifth wheel? Yeah, okay. definitely. Um, you know, we have had quite a few instances where, you know, driver drops the trailer, you know, either cranks the dollies all the way down the ground and then decides to crank it three or four more times. And next thing you know, the trailer's sticking about four or five inches higher than the fifth wheel. And the next guy goes hook up to it, either high hooks it because he doesn't realize how high the trailer's setting, which that's always fun. Yes. No, no one wants to deal with that. Nope. Or, you know, they do notice it and if everything's working properly, you know, it will dolly down, should be good. Or other cases where the trailer's just way too low and guy backs into the trailer and now you have holes in the trailer. I was trailer. just going to say you end up with two pock marks in the, yeah. in the nose of the trailer from the fifth <laughs> wheel going through that nose. Yeah, I know, just to let you guys know, we will be doing a, a proper hookup and uh, dropping of trailers. Not as much of the hookup, but the dropping of trailers. Um, it's one of the videos I do have planned, so guys, stay tuned for that in the future coming up. Yeah. Um, so, anything else, uh, Todd, you want yeah, to touch yeah, on? Yeah, we've got a couple more things here while we get the time. Uh, let's talk about brakes. Uh, when you, you go into a stop there and you know you need to get out and 
do whatever you uh, make sure you put your brakes on in the tractor and the trailer uh, these simple little oversight can be catastrophic uh, we've had uh, some pretty serious inst instances uh, where people were hurt um, and we've also had where trucks uh, at a, sitting at a truck stop roll into the retention ponds no and so again yeah. you don't be that guy yeah and uh we've guess all, we've all seen those photos posted uh, <laughs> yeah. in right. embarrassing moments there right right and then we've also had where trucks have uh just rolled ever so slightly and just touched the the garbage dumpster and you know anything we mess up on a truck is just thousands of dollars and anytime you get body work that's you know four to six weeks if we got to get in there if they tear up uh you know, we swap out bumpers pretty quick and fenders, but once you get into the, the radiator and the grill and all that stuff, then you're uh, then you're going to be sitting for a little while. So mm -hmm. make sure you get out there and check your brakes, trailers, and uh, and truck. And, and pay attention when you're uh, backing up, guys. That, again, with the fender thing, I see a lot of guys. They're watching, so intent on watching what's going on behind them, they're forgetting about where the front end of their truck is, and then you end up clipping yeah. and ripping off bumpers and fenders and whatnot. You know. One of the things, you know, you ever in your truck, hooked up, just hooked up from the trailer, or you're just trying to leave and, you know, trying to go and your brakes are just grabbing and you're like, man, my, my brakes will not release. What is going on? Just do yourself a favor, you know, pop that little Johnny bar up, make sure it's all the way up. That way your trailer brake are completely released because no one likes to go out on service call for a uh, uh, trailer brake, handbrake, just down just a little bit where brakes are grabbing enough to apply the brakes and uh yeah then you get a service tech hop in your truck move the arm up and all right you're good to go well there's that too <laughs> and once you push that red plunger in guys give it a few seconds to air up yes <laughs> don't just push it in and try to drive <laughs> especially these older trailers uh that might have been sitting for a while you know air just doesn't go in the trailer magically and a couple seconds it, it can take a little bit I think I got one more thing to, to go I want to share uh, stay away from the low bridges <laughs> guys. We're, uh, you, we're you would think you would that. think that is a common thing or common sense thing but no it does happen guys <laughs> it, it, it happens more often than it should um, and and don't be that guy once again so <laughs> it, it tears the top off the the truck and then you destroy the uh the trailer so it's fifty hundred thousand dollars time it's all said and done and, and then you're sitting there <laughs> on the side of the road with your head down because you're ashamed so yeah uh watch all the signs most of the time it's in bigger older cities you know chicago we got louisville uh, cleveland and new york areas um Try to stay away from using uh, your smartphones for directions because those are uh, those are made for uh, four wheelers. So uh, if you need directions, call your dispatch. Uh, but just make sure that uh, if, you, if you miss a turn, know exactly where you're going because a lot of these uh, older cities have uh, you know were built a long time ago and they're not used to our big trucks now. So we want to try to avoid those and, and be smart about. And don't follow your GPS. Yeah. It may be a trucking GPS. It's not always right. <laughs> so yeah. any any final message to the drivers uh, or guys be safe. Thanks for driving for us. Yeah, uh, you know, your professionals out there need to maintain yourself as professionals. Uh, take care of your equipment. Be safe. Remember it could be our families out there behind you following you we want to we want to do the, yeah. the right thing at all all times so if you have any problems you can always call us reach out let us know give us your thoughts and uh, if there's a, a maintenance issue by all means we'll jump on it and get it fixed and so basically if they're not sure the best thing to do is just to call you guys and say hey this is my situation mm -hmm. what should i do sure there is no pride in or swallowing your pride in that case because you'd rather ask the question there is no then end up no. then end up having to call a, a wrecker or something right, like that right. and then it's even more embarrassing so too much risk and uh, what we do is dangerous so we need to you know maintain ourselves and be professional and ask the right question no yeah. stupid questions out there yeah, it doesn't matter if you're a rookie or 30 year vet or you know grew up in a trucking family you know there's things out there that we don't all know i mean no one knows it all no one's been in every situation we're all in this together, uh, that's for sure. All right, definitely. 
thank well, you guys. Thank, thank you very much for uh, taking the time here today. And um, hopefully you guys will have learned a little something and got a little bit better understanding of what they're asking of you and me and all of us. <laughs> Talk to you in the next one.